Thank you guys for coming. Um, today I'm going to be presenting uh, my action research project. I uh, decided to do um, a comparison of direct instruction versus facilitation. Um, in lieu of actually doing a moral inventory because of time constraints, we decided to do more of a, a instruction comparison for material that had morally ambiguous or moral dilemmas in it. So um, the study compared and contrasted two distinct methods of, of teaching. Uh, first, there's direct instruction, which is an instructional approach to academic subjects that emphasizes the use of carefully sequenced steps. It includes demonstration, modeling, guided practice, and then independent application. Um, so for this type of instruction, we went with a lesson on um, Flannery O'Connor because it was a more direct, uh, easy to follow, and easy to make into direct instruction. And the other type of instruction that I looked at for this study was facilitation. Um, facilitation is a teaching method that's characterized by student-led instruction in all aspects of their own learning. So rather than having the teacher direct, instruct, stand in front and lecture, the students actually lead the discussion um, and the instructor acts more as a facilitator and prompts discussion rather than um, feeding them the information. Uh, the two methods were evaluated in reference to their ability to either enhance or impede the student's ability to identify their own moral code in order to gain a greater understanding of the conceptual um, nature of the morally ambiguous material that we were looking at. Um, so next method, the participants were uh, 20 high school students ranging from grades 10 through 12. Um, it was a creative writing course at Archbishop Spalding High School, which is a small private Catholic school. Um, socioeconomic and ethnic background were all predominantly the same. Um, approximately 95% of the students were Caucasian, um, upper middle class, and um, Christian. Um, unfortunately, because of time constraints, I wasn't able to do more of a, a demographic of the students because you know you have to secure permission from the parents. So it just kind of uh, would have added that in had I had more time. Um, so students were given a preliminary morality survey. Uh, which gave them the option of choosing a number from one to three. One was strongly agree, two sometimes agree, and three was never agree uh, to a series of statements that regarded different moral questions and dilemmas. Uh, after the preliminary survey, students were shown the movie La Haine, La Haine which is a French film that involves a good deal of serious material, morally questionable situations with authority figures. Um, during the movie, instructors facilitated discussion regarding the movie by um, asking questions and prompting discussion. After viewing the movie, students were given a post-survey, which was a short response uh, questionnaire asking if their opinions had changed in any way due to the movie, viewing the movie, and then discussing the movie. Um, the subsequent lesson was on Flannery O'Connor's short story, A Good Man is Hard to Find, where a teaching was more structured and involved it guided questions, modeling of the creation of a short story, and independent practice where students wrote their own short stories addressing moral dilemmas from their own personal perspectives as they placed themselves as characters in the story. Um, as a lead-in, students were asked to write in short response format the, the answers to questions regarding moral situations in relation to the story. They were asked basically, what is good? What is your definition of good? Is it a socially accepted thing or is it something that you decide yourself. Uh, while the story was read, instructors stopped the class to ask specific guided questions regarding moral issues in the story. And after it was finished, students were again given the morality survey, the same one that they were given before let in, to complete in order to ascertain if there was any change in their responses to the same morally difficult questions. Responses were recorded and compared in a graph, uh, which clearly demonstrated a difference in opinion after the direct instruction lesson. Uh, so this is the initial survey. This is the one they took 
before Latin. And as you can see, um, the overwhelming majority of students chose response two, which was the sometimes agree. So a lot of them were sort of in the middle. They, they weren't definitely agreeing with the statements and they weren't definitely disagreeing with them. They were very much kind of in the middle and unsure. Uh, whereas after the facilitation, I'm sorry, after the direct instruction lesson um, on Flannery O'Connor, you see response one and three was chosen overwhelmingly over response two, meaning they either were polarized definitely for or definitely against the moral questions, and they were given the exact same questions. So it's a pretty clear indication that um, they had a better understanding of their own moral code, and so therefore were able to understand the material in a more clear manner. Um, since it was a creative writing course, students weren't assessed in a formal way as far as summative assessments. They're more given written um, assignments. And in addition, uh, coming in the classroom so late in the year, again, limited the methods of evaluation that I had available. Um, so if you guys have any questions, uh, just let me know. So the, um, on the first graph, that was for the, um, the facilitated, excuse me, facilitated instruction? Yes, ma'am. Okay, and then the second graph is for direct, direct instruction. Yes. So um, this is facilitated. Yeah, this is the facilitated. So as you can see, the red bars are the response to, which is the sometimes agree. And you can see they're chosen, you know, they were given 20 questions. And they were chosen overwhelmingly more. Okay than response one or three. Whereas after the direct instruction lesson, um, one and three were chosen much more over two. So to me, that clearly indicates that they have a better understanding of what their own moral code is and how they would respond to situations. Whereas before they were very in the middle, they were like, sometimes it agrees, sometimes it doesn't. So. Um, and next slide. In conclusion, basically the findings of the study, uh, direct instruction was found to be more effective in helping the students to both identify their own moral code as well as to understand conceptually the material which contained the moral dilemmas. Do you think that could be because when a teacher directly instructs a student, sometimes because we're in that authoritative position, what we say they take as that's what's right? and that sways their opinion, whereas when they're being facilitated, they have more of their own input, or is that not part of that conclusion? Um, I could see that as a possibility for the findings because it's definitely true that when you're participating in direct instruction, the instructor is more of an authority figure. Right. They're definitely giving, um, you know, more of, I wouldn't say they're giving the answers directly, but they're definitely leading it a lot more, whereas in facilitation, it, it is very much student-led. Um, so I would think in response to that, uh, you know, it's good to at least start out a lesson with direct instruction so that they have a clearer understanding of the material since it is so ambiguous, it's so in the middle, you know, it's not a definite yes or no answer. Um, but definitely I think facilitation should be part of it because they should be allowed to expand on the ideas and kind of form their own based off of you know what they're reading or what they're viewing. Do you think the fact that one was a movie and one was a written piece of literature would affect it at all? Or part um, of art and understanding? Well, it's, that's definitely a possibility. Um, I think that you know with the culture now, with the generation now, um, they respond a lot more readily to movies and to, you know, to anything involving technology just because of how much um, they're exposed to that. And, and, you know, for them, it's more of an entertainment thing. And, you know, they might be more readily understanding of something that they're seeing visually rather than something that they're reading and having to kind of conceptually imagine on their own. So um, I definitely think that that could be a possibility uh, that there was some distinction between the two. So in the future, if I was to, to either modify the study or rework it, I would probably either have two movies or have two pieces of literature or even have them 
write something based off of what they watched, just so that it was more of a direct comparison, because it is definitely different types of media that they are, you know, interacting with between the two. Thank you very much.